Hi, folks. So I've been bracing myself for groans since I'm giving the obligatory COVID presentation, a topic I know most of us are tired of, but I'm hoping that this audience of public health folks still has some waning interest. I hate when speakers do this, but I'm gonna do it to you anyway. By a show of hands, who here has been vaccinated against COVID? Now I'm not talking about boosters, just your initial vaccination series. Okay, I'm glad to see this. If your experience was like mine, the wait to become eligible for a shot once they were authorized seemed excruciatingly slow. Then you had to navigate a labyrinth of challenges and find a time and place to get a vaccine. The process was puzzling and frustrating. That experience was in part because of how Minnesota and other states prioritize different groups for vaccinations. One of the groups at the front of the line was older adults, especially those age 65 and up, because they were much more likely to die of COVID. But that choice had health equity implications. Here in Minnesota, 20% of the state's white population is elderly, while it's less than 10% for other groups. So the decision to prioritize the elderly effectively pushed the state's white population further ahead in line. As we see in this quote from the CDC, it was no secret that COVID had a disproportionate burden on certain racial and ethnic groups. So why did Minnesota choose to pursue a heavily age-based vaccination strategy that preferenced its white population? In 2020, COVID was killing American Indian, Black, and Hispanic people at more than twice the rate of white people. Maybe the decision to prioritize by age was race blind, but race blind isn't the same as race neutral. For my study, I was lucky to have access to data from the Minnesota Electronic Health Record Consortium that included every COVID-19 vaccine administered in the state of Minnesota, as well as select demographic data on people getting vaccines. We looked at two basic measures. First, the amount of time it took to vaccinate 50% of people in different demographic groups. Here you can see that Minnesota vaccinated half of its elderly population within three months of vaccines becoming available, but it took months longer for young adults. We also examined vaccination rates at the end of 2022 for those same demographic groups. You can see that almost all elderly, vaccin almost all elderly Minnesotans were vaccinated by the end of the year. This slide shows time to 50% vaccination rate again, but by race and ethnicity. Minnesota took twice as long to vaccinate its black and Latino populations as the white population, and it took even longer to reach that same threshold for American Indians. But in this chart, we see that vaccination disparities at the end of 2022 were pretty minimal. That suggests to me that time lags we saw in the prior slide weren't due to a lack of vaccine demand, but rather Minnesota did not adequately prioritize vulnerable racial and ethnic groups. We also stratify data by both race and ethnicity and age. My main takeaway here is that Minnesota did pretty well at minimizing disparities among elderly, but poorly for young adults. Eventually, some of those disparities narrowed, but it wasn't a rosy picture even at the end of 2022. Two years after COVID vaccines were first authorized, Minnesota still hadn't crossed a 50% threshold for young adult American Indians. Pivoting to community type, we see that Minnesota took more than twice as long, 12 months, to vaccinate people in rural communities across the state compared to people in urban and suburban areas at just five months. And those disparities were durable. By the end of 2022, people living in urban and suburban areas had a vaccination rate of over 70%, while people in other communities had vaccination rates that were less than 60%. We also found disparities by gender. Minnesota reached a 50% threshold for females about three months sooner than it did for males. Those three months might not seem like long, but remember that three month gap occurred during the Delta variant surge, so lives were at stake. On this slide, we see that those vaccination rate disparities eventually narrowed. Clearly the hurdles to vaccinating men weren't insurmountable, so why did it take so much longer? And finally, vaccination rates for children. I find these deeply troubling in light of research that COVID-19 was a top 10 cause of death for children in 2020. While these data are from the end of 2022, there's been almost no measurable improvement in 2023. These findings aren't just about Monday morning quarterbacking. Whether we like it or not, more pandemics are coming, just like this photo from the Spanish flu a century ago. 
but I believe we have a responsibility to do better and to consider health equity in our next response.